Welcome back to part two in the How to Lose Fat for Basketball mini series where I take you step by step through the entire process of building out a fat loss nutrition plan for basketball. Now in part one, we discussed the first three steps and you need those first three steps. If you haven't seen part one yet, I'm gonna to toss it up on the screen right now. Go watch that and then come back to this video. Again, like we talked about in part one, there are a couple of reasons for wanting to lose fat for basketball that's actually gonna be beneficial for you on the court. Now, if you're holding on to excess body fat, like significantly overweight or in that sort of situation, then yes, you'll benefit from cutting down on that body fat and that actually could help you get faster, more explosive, jump higher, and overall be a better athlete, not to mention be healthier overall. So there is good reason to lose fat in that sort of situation. Now, again, if you're already relatively lean and a healthy individual or you are still in a growth and development stage of your life, so if you're a teenager, I would highly recommend considering chasing after performance or muscle gain instead. Now, assuming you've gone through the first three steps, so creating that vision, understanding what comes along with it, building that foundation, that base to build off of going forward, and now tracking your food intake for a couple of days before this without changing anything at all, we're ready to get into step number four, which is actually determining how many calories should I eat and what, are, what should my macros look like or macronutrient intake. There's a couple of different scenarios here, so bear with me. Now, let's start off with the simplest situation. Overall, to achieve fat loss, you need to be in what's called a calorie deficit, which means you're burning more calories than you're taking in, which means that your body has to tap into its stored resources, AKA fat, and burn fat and that's how you actually lose body fat. So how do we get you into that calorie deficit and in that position where your body has to burn body fat? Well, first things first, we've got to figure out how many calories you're burning right now. And we do that by plugging in your age, your height, your weight, and activity level into an equation called the Harris-Benedict equation. And there's a bunch of different calculators for this online. I have one posted in the Facebook group, so I'll link that down below if you want to check that out. You can also just Google it and you'll find it pretty easily. That's Harris-Benedict equation. And plug all your data in there and it'll spit out a number. That'll be your total daily energy expenditure in an ideal situation. So assuming everything is normal, you take that number, subtract about 10% from that. So if it was 3,000 calories, you would subtract 300 and your starting calorie goal would be 2,700. That's a very textbook situation and it doesn't always quite line up like that. So that's assuming that you were already eating 3,000 calories to begin with. So if you tracked your food intake for a couple of days and you're eating 3,200 calories, it's like, oh crap, yeah, I'm eating more than I'm burning. So in that case, let me just take it down to 2,700 and I'm good. And that applies for whatever number, 3,000, just an arbitrary number. You'll take that maintenance and subtract 10% from it. That'll be your calorie goal to start off with. Now, in some cases, you'll have a really weird situation where you end up plugging everything in and it spits out that 3,000, hypothetically. So you're thinking, okay, I'm burning 3,000 calories, right? And then you look at your food intake that you tracked and you're eating 1,800 calories a day. Now, first of all, it could just be a measuring error and simply you weren't tracking things correctly. So you might actually be eating more than 1,800. But in some cases, athletes will be pretty drastically under eating. So what do you do in that situation where you need to lose body fat, but you're under eating and you're eating less than you're technically burning already? Well, if you look at it, by definition, your maintenance calories is the amount of calories you need to eat to maintain your weight. And if you've maintained your weight over the past three to four days since you've been tracking, or two to three, however long it's been, by definition, you're eating your maintenance calories. And what can actually happen is when you under eat for a prolonged period of time, your metabolism can actually slow down and you have these negative metabolic adaptations. Now, it's not a death sentence. Your metabolism is not broken. We just need to get you eating more calories before we can cut back down. Because if we cut down from 1800 and your maintenance is technically 3000, that's not gonna be a really good look for overall health, just how you feel, and also performance. Injury risk goes up and it's just overall not a good thing. So in that case, where you find yourself drastically under eating, which I would categorize as eating 500, 600 or more calories below that maintenance. So if your maintenance is technically 3000 calories based on the calculator. And right now you're currently eating 2000 or 2400 or less than that. Then you'll want to follow this approach. In that case, let's spend some time getting you back up to what your maintenance should be. So if you are in this situation right now, what I would do is take your current intake that you just tracked and add 20% to it. Start there and then every one to two weeks, you'll increase by about 50 to 100 calories per week until you've hit that maintenance that you should have been at. So let's say you started at 1800 calories, you would increase by whatever 20% of 1800 is, not quite sure what the math is there. And then you would increase again by 100 or so calories every one to two weeks until you reach 3000 calories. Once you get there, you'll stay there for a couple of weeks to allow your body to maintain, establish that as its new set point, 
And then from there, you'll go back into that calorie deficit and attempt to lose body fat. It's a little bit of a longer process and having a coach during this can help. So if you're interested in that or you need help, let me know. But overall, you can definitely do it. And taking this time to be patient with it and do things the right way will come back tenfold in the long run rather than just trying to rush through it, drastically cut calories when you're in no place to. Okay, so now that we've got calories dialed in, let's move on to macronutrients or macros for short. The first one we're gonna look at is protein intake. This one's pretty straightforward. You're gonna to wanna to be eating roughly one gram of protein per pound of body weight at a bare minimum. Now during a fat loss phase, I usually actually like to recommend my athletes go up a little bit to 1.2 grams of protein per pound of body weight. So for example, a 200 pound individual will be looking at eating anywhere between 200 to 240 grams of protein per day. Ideally, I would like to have you at the higher end of that range during the fat loss phase, but if you can't actually stick to that yet, start at the lower end and work your way up. And then in terms of your fat intake, nothing too drastic here. Usually for athletes, I like to recommend about 25 to 30% of your calories come from fat. I don't like to recommend going super high fat during a fat loss phase for athletes in particular, because going low carb is gonna put you in a position where, where you're gonna harm your performance even more than you already are by going into a calorie deficit. So I usually like to recommend keeping your fat intake relatively moderate to low at about 25 to 30%. I wouldn't go below 25 just to keep your hormonal function on point and overall health on point, but that is where I would start with your fat intake. And then last but not least, and definitely not least, is your carbohydrate intake, which is gonna make up the rest of your caloric intake once protein and fat is accounted for. And again, I don't like to go low carb during the fat loss phase for basketball players because you need carbs to fuel performance, and you're already in a position where your performance is gonna be slightly compromised by being in a calorie deficit, so we don't wanna compound on that by going low carb. And not to mention carbohydrates are also protein sparing, so by keeping carbohydrates relatively high during a fat loss phase and still staying in a calorie deficit, we can put you in a position where we're maximizing fat loss while minimizing the losses in performance and minimizing the losses in muscle mass. So again, I wouldn't recommend going super low carb. And actually I'm a big fan of keeping carbs relatively high as long as you're still in that calorie deficit. And not to mention carbohydrates taste good, so going super low carb just likely wouldn't be very enjoyable. So just something to consider. Now that we've got the macros dialed in, I know there's a lot of stuff, I, I've thrown a lot of stuff at you so far in this video, so definitely comment down below if you have any questions about any of this. But now that we've got that dialed in, let's move into the fifth step, which is assessing your progress and tracking biofeedback. And first and foremost, we've got to be asking how much weight should you be aiming to lose per week? You really don't want to go super quick here. And you want to aim to lose about 0.5 to 1% of your body weight per week. If you're on the leaner side already, definitely err towards the lower side of that range. If you have a lot more weight to lose, then you can err on the upper side of that range but 0.5 to 1% of your body weight per week, that'll help maintain as much muscle as possible while also achieving fat loss and making sure you're in that calorie deficit. And to keep track of this, you're gonna to wanna to weigh yourself every single day, but don't get too caught up in those daily fluctuations. Instead, we're gonna use those daily data points and at the end of every week, you're gonna take the average for each week. And overall, that average should change by that range that I just mentioned, so 0.5 to 1% of your body weight per week. And some weeks are gonna be more than that, some weeks are gonna be less than that, some weeks you might not lose any weight at all, some weeks you might actually appear to gain weight back. But overall, in the long term, that trend should look like 0.5 to 1% of your body weight per week lost. And along with the weight metric you're gonna take, you're also gonna take progress pictures every single week. That's gonna help you kind of balance out. We have this objective, the numerical data, but we also wanna have the qualitative data because even if you don't lose any weight, but you end up looking better and you feel lighter and more agile on court, that's a win. Don't get too, too caught up in the scale weight. Use the progress pictures as well to help you assess your progress. And last but definitely not least in terms of assessing progress, I definitely recommend that you track your biofeedback on a daily basis, which is essentially the feedback that your body is giving you on how the plan is working. So your energy levels, your stress levels, your sleep quality, your hunger, and your digestion. Those are five things I recommend you track. And six actually, your training performance. So you wanna keep track of those things on a scale of one to five and assess how you're feeling in each of those categories every single day. So we can make sure that your body is responding fairly well and if we notice any severe drop-offs in energy or performance or sleep or digestion or any of those things, we can make the necessary adjustments. And I have a spreadsheet aimed to help you do this in the Facebook group, so I'll link that down below and you can join that and get access to that. It's the same one I use with every single one of my clients. And then the next step we wanna introduce, and this is very important, oftentimes the missing link, and this really helps avoid plateaus and break plateaus when they happen, it's the 
idea of periodization or nutritional periodization. Many hoopers fall into the trap of thinking they have to eat the same exact way year round. So they go into this fat loss diet plan and they end up eating that way for months and years on end. And like I said, in the short term, it actually hurts your performance to go into a calorie deficit. So if you're eating this way year round without changing anything and without going back into a maintenance phase or back into a muscle gaining phase or performance phase, you're gonna hurt your performance long term and really put yourself at risk for increased injury risk and things like that that we want to avoid. And not to mention, you're gonna hit a plateau at some point that you're not gonna be able to break and it's gonna be super frustrating. So what I recommend is when you go into this dieting phase, only stay in there for about 12 to 16 weeks. Beyond that, you're pushing into that point of kind of running yourself into the ground, especially as a high performing athlete, you really don't want to be doing this. So I like to recommend about 12 weeks, maybe 16 if you're feeling really good and you have some momentum going and you're still seeing progress and you haven't quite plateaued. But long story short, you wanna have a finite end date on that dieting phase. So then after that, you go into what's called a reverse diet. I'll do a video on that at some point in the future because at this point, this video is getting pretty long. But at that point, you're gonna go into a reverse diet and bring your calories back up. And the point at which you know it's time to shift out of the fat loss phase is kind of objective, but also kind of subjective. Like I said, 12 to 16 weeks is kind of like that sweet spot, but also you want to look at your biofeedback and this is one of the main reasons we track it. Once biofeedback starts to go downhill and you start feeling super low energy, training performance kind of starts to drop off and you're just not feeling too good overall, at that point, it's probably time to shift out of the fat loss phase into a maintenance phase and a reverse diet, getting your calories back up, restoring hormonal health because testosterone goes down during the deficit as well, especially if you're in it for too long, and getting you back to a place where you feel good, you feel healthy, and you're performing really well, and you can actually reap the benefits of that fat loss phase that you just went through. And again, we could be here for about two hours talking about nutritional periodization alone and actually talk about that in the eight-week program. We spent an entire week on that concept because it's so important. So if you have any questions about periodization or the fat loss process in general, definitely comment below and be sure to check out the Facebook group link down below. That's going to have a bunch of the resources I mentioned in there. So it's free and I'm in there to provide you with direct support. So definitely check that out. Drop a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe for new videos just like this every single Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. And I will see you in the next video.